But uh, no, but talk about uh, Cadillac Three. You know, influences like you know, kind of the history of the band, and like you know, I know you guys got a tour next year. Maybe build into that. Yeah, um, the the Cadillac Three started in 2011 after a terrible falling out with Warner Brothers Records and our last band, the American Bang Band. Um, and basically, we got dropped from the label in 2010, like December. And then January 2nd, we were in the studio with Dave Cobb doing the first Cadillac record and just the three of us. And um, it was kind of a no rules thing because, you know, we, we'd been pulled in so many directions by the A&R staff at Warner Brothers and the president of the company. And this band was going to be, okay, this is my way. This is the only way we're doing this. I'm writing the songs I want to write. We wrote 11 songs in like two weeks and did the record. Like that's what artists are supposed to do. They're not supposed to sit around and wait for somebody to say whether or not something's a hit or not. You know, and I think a lot of artists in town, Dirk's, Dirk's being one and Eric Church being one, heard that record and saw they I'd known them for a while, you know, through the songwriting community, but um, like they kind of respected how we bounced back and did something really cool on our own by ourselves. And it was cool sound. It was a different sound. It was guitar, drums, and lap still. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I hadn't heard of anybody else really doing that. And um, we started touring on our own, man. We got in a van again, no trailer, all the gear in the back of the van and back and forth to Texas, Chicago, Florida, South Carolina, Atlanta, Chattanooga, Memphis, and did that for two and a half years and built up our own fan base the old school way and got it to a point to where it was big enough, but we couldn't get any bigger unless we brought in the right partners. And so that is, I know this is a business um, podcast. So it's like, if you look at it like that, that's when we started really looking at it. You know, those two years in after two years, we were all on salary making 50, 60 grand a year. And because you know, we weren't having to pay anybody, you know what I mean? And we were yeah. driving ourselves. So I, um, we had a couple different interests in town. Warner brothers, ironically, <laughs> um, <laughs> Full and, circle. And uh, yeah, then I get a call one day from Big Machine uh, President Scott Braschetta. And he said, Hey, what are you guys doing uh, next weekend? I said, We're actually off. And he said, Will you fly down? Can I fly you down to Cancun so you can meet the label, play for us, and tell us how you want to do this? And I said, Oh, that's a pretty cool way of courting an artist. So <laughs> I said, Sure. So we go down there and met everybody. And, you know, they, they loved the music, loved the mindset. And, you know, we stick out. I don't know if you're familiar with their roster, but we stick out like a sore thumb. At the time, it was um, Rascal Flats and Taylor Swift and, you know, the band Perry, Thomas Rhett. And so we, I, th I thought it was really cool because, you know, I, I, he, me and Scott shook hands and I said, I'll, I will do this as long as you just let me kind of do my thing. And I think this will be a good partnership. And so we signed with Big Machine. Brought on a manager out of Texas uh, for the time, and we we got to work, man. And I said, he said, "How do you want to do it?" I said, "Well, I'm sick of driving myself, so we need a um, either a Sprinter van or something and a tour manager." So he paid for that, bought us that, and got us on the road in, in a way that was a little easier on us because we could sleep in the back and stuff. And um, next thing you know, man, we're you know putting songs on the radio and doing pretty good. And that's when you see the benefit of country radio is when you've got one in the thirties or in the twenties and you're like, Oh wow, these are different. These aren't the same flannel wearing old people <laughs> coming to the show. This, there's some girls in the crowd. There's look at that kid. He's, he's 15. Cool. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yep. The only way he was so hearing you was on the radio. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we started hearing that. And then that's also right about then we did like the Nashville show where we got on there with Connie Britton and all the, the, uh, whatever it was called Nashville, but yeah. we were on there. And so at that point you get to where you're like, you're getting recognized at pilots and flying J's at four in the morning by truck drivers or, <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you get a little bit, get a little bit of that. And then from then on, man, it, we got really lucky with the Florida Georgia line guys took us out for a year. Dirks took us out for a year. Eric took us out for a year. And then we now it's gotten the worldwide, man. We're we're doing something really cool, and we don't have a lot of radio help these days. So it's kind of like it's it's still we're keeping that same mindset from the beginning. Where do 
doing it our way and building it. And um, it's 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 a lot of fun because me and Kelby and Neil, the other guys in the band, we all grew up together oh, in Nashville. Cool. And there's there's none of that in town. You know, there's none of that. That most bands are either put together or they meet each other in a songwriting room and decide to become a duo. You know what I mean? Yep. No, man, you guys did it the old school way, you know, growing the following organically. And then it's exhausting <laughs> the hard way, you know, mm -hmm. didn't have uh, all the shortcuts. The uh, but the no. uh, talk about the uh, hey guys, thanks so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, check out one of these other clips for all the latest tips and insights. We'll see you next time.